This is problem number four from section five six. It uh, asks us to find the total area of the shaded region, and it gives us uh, two lines. One line is horizontal, y equals three, and the other line is y equals three sine squared x. Looks like so. And they want us to find the area that's inside of there. And now this is a little bit different problem than what we've been dealing with. So what we've been dealing with is we've been dealing with functions that are crossing the x-axis and we're finding the area from the x-axis to that curve. Well now we have two different curves, if you want to call this straight line a curve, they technically do. Uh, now we're trying to find the area between two different curves. So <clears throat> this is something new that we haven't quite talked about before, but I think it makes some sense. So we can say that if f of x is greater than or equal to g of x. So I'm going to call this first function f of x and this second function g of x. So in our case, is f of x greater than or equal to g of x? Yes, f of x is greater function than g of x throughout a, b. So meaning it's larger than this function throughout a, b. So yes, and a, b talking about an interval, an x, an x uh, interval, uh, x coordinate interval. And both are continuous. Both are continuous lines. All right, so if this stuff is true, then the area is going to equal the integral from a to b, and a is going to be this pi over 2, because that's our farthest right or farthest left coordinate, left bound. And uh, b is going to be the farthest right bound. And obviously, the functions, the upper bound, and this is going to be the lower bound, which is the 3 sine squared x. Now, it says that if we take f of x minus g of x, the integral of that, we're going to get the area. Now let's think about this. In previous problems, we were technically doing this. The only difference was f of x was our function that was crossing the x-axis, and g of x was actually the line y equals 0, essentially. So the line y equals 0 was our g of x function. Well, if we put 0 in for g of x, it's not there. So it was just integral of that original function. So I hope that that kind of makes some sense, that we are doing this. We just had g of x at 0 because y equals 0 is the x-axis. All right, now that we've got that taken care of, let's actually use this uh, formula to then solve. So I'm going to kind of set the formula up here. Uh, and I'm going to start with, we know we want integral a to b f of x minus g of x. So my integral, my area, is going to equal the integral a to b is pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. My f of x is 3 minus 3 sine squared x dx. All right. Now this is where we have to start to use some trig stuff. So my original thought was, can we do a u substitution on this? Well, let's just say we write this as sine x squared, and then we do u equals sine x. When we do the derivative of sine, we get cosine, and then we throw that in there. We're actually not canceling anything out, so we're not going to be able to do a u substitution there. I hope you can kind of see that. Um, so then we have to think, is there a way to rewrite this so that we can get rid of the square? Well, I think the first thing to do is to factor out a 3. So let's go ahead and do that. So we end up with 3, the integral from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. And that would be 1 minus sine squared x dx. Now you'll notice that uh, we have 1 minus sine squared x dx. Well, if we bring back out the Pythagorean identities, we can see that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So if we subtract the sine squared over, 1 minus sine squared is actually just cosine squared. So I can rewrite this as cosine squared. So I can say equals 3 integral pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, and this is cosine now squared x.
dx. All right, so then we can go ahead and we can think to ourselves, how can we get a squared function, all right? How do we get a squared function to go from being a squared function to not having a square? Well, that's kind of weird. It's like, what the heck can we do there? Well, if you remember back to our trig cheat sheets, you'll see that we had different formulas. There was half angle formulas and there was double angle formulas. And the double angle formula, formulas essentially allowed us to reduce the power of a trig function. So in our case, because we have a square, we're trying to reduce that power down to basically being non-existent. Well, they may, there's this uh, trig function that says cosine 2x, this is a double angle formula, cosine 2x equals 2 cosine squared x minus 1. So if I take this identity and I rearrange it, all right, and I'm going to rearrange this a little bit so that it says cosine squared x equals something. I can rearrange this, and I'll do that down here, cosine uh, 2x equals 2 cosine squared x minus 1. I add the 1 over, so it's cosine 2x plus 1 equals 2 cosine squared x. Divide the 2, and I'll end up with cosine 2x plus 1 all over 2 equals cosine squared x. So now I can take this using that double angle formula. I can take this and replace it for the cosine squared. And why, why is that important? Well, now I don't have that square there on the cosine. I can now use a u substitution to solve this. So let's plug that in. That's going to equal 3 integral pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. And we're going to now say that this is cosine 2x plus 1 all over 2 dx. I'm going to factor out this 1 half and bring that out front. So that's now going to be, I'm going to give myself a little bit more room. So 3 halves integral pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. And then that is now cosine 2x plus 1 dx. Now I have a function inside of a function, so that's where I'm going to use my u substitution. I'm going to say u equals 2x, so du over dx equals 2. Multiply the dx, divide the 2, I get du over 2 equals dx. And now I can plug that stuff in, and I can say that this is equal to 3 halves, integral pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. And this is now, when I plug it in, I'll get cosine u plus 1 times du over 2. Now I can take that du over 2 and I can bring that out front and do the integration at the same time. So if the half comes out front, that's going to be 3 over 4. And now let's integrate cosine u and 1. Cosine u, let's see what the integral of cosine u would be. Well, the integral of cosine, come back to our derivatives, integral of cosine would be sine. So this is going to give us uh, 3 over 4, sine u plus u. When we integrate the 1, we get u. And this is going to be evaluated from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. Now I'm going to slide up a little bit. So now I'm going to continue this. So I'm going to say that this is now equal to 3 over 4 
sine of, I'm going to replace the u with 2x, so sine 2x plus 2x, and I'm integrating that from pi over 2, or not integrating it, but evaluating it from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. Distribute the 3 over 4 to each term. That would be 3 sine 2x over 4 plus, if I distribute it to here, 3 over 4 times 2, it's going to be uh, 3 halves. So 3x over 2. And we're evaluating that from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and plug these in. If I plug in 3 pi over 2, that's going to give me 3 sine of 2 times 3 pi over 2 all over 4, and then that would be plus 3 3 pi over 2 over 2 minus 3 sine 2 uh, pi over 2 this time all over 4 uh, Minus, because we're subtracting them both, right? So minus, uh, well, it would be 3 times pi over 2 over 2. All right. Let's continue here. And we can say that that equals... So if I multiply my 2 times 3 pi over 2, I just get sine of 3 pi. So I get 3 sine of 3 pi over 4 plus, uh, that'll give me 9 pi over 2 over 2, which is 9 pi over 4, minus, this gives me 3 sine pi over 4 minus, well this is 3 pi over 2 over 2, which is 3 pi over 4. What is sine of 3 pi? Well sine of 3 pi is, uh, that's basically at 180 degrees, so that's 0. So this cancels out. So that equals 0 plus 9 pi over 4 minus sine of pi, we know is 0, so minus 0, minus 3 pi over 4. And we end up with 6 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 2. And that's the area for our original function, our original integral, which was 3 minus 3 sine squared x. Hopefully that makes sense.